Hello, Facebook family. This is Brittany Spades. And Gary Bates coming to you Sunday, October the 2nd, 2016. Um, today was first Sunday at New Hope Church of God in Christ, pastoral day. Again, our church is at 5763 Walnut. Cross Street is Mason. And next Sunday, let me just give a shout out, is Men's Day. Come join us, men. Wives, girlfriends, bring your men to New Hope and let them learn about Christ and what they what Christ can do in their lives. Honey, I know you got something about praise. Before oh, you get yeah. started, though, just hold it. I just oh, want sure? just a quick oh, shout out. Okay. <laughs> just a quick shout out. Uh, Pastor, uh, who is our Pastor Milton Starks, mm -hmm. uh, came from 1 Samuel 17, um, verses 1 through 16. His subject was, it's, go it's going to rain again. And he also um, let us know, regardless of how dry the situation is. Um, just real quick, um, uh, he talked about, if you listen to the voice of God, he will provide your provision. And that's what he told the woman. Well, that's what Elijah told the woman and her son. He said, just go in there, bake the cake, or bake that's the bread, right. or whatever. There's bake one for yourself, and make make one for me. And don't worry about the barrel uh, going empty. He said, as long as there's a dry season, I believe. He said, you don't have nothing to worry about. And that's how God works. He works out. He works through what we call the impossibilities. But with God, all things are possible. Uh, he talked about the empty barrels of our lives. You know, you wonder how God's going to work this out, work this situation out. How's he going to do it? How is come? How is going to come about? Oh, my poor, sad life. I've been not. I've been like this all my life. I don't see no way out. But it, don't worry about it. God knows how to bring you to the top. Yes. Cause cause you to rain, cause it to rain again. Yeah. Matter of fact, during his message, he posed this question: How did the raven? Get the food to Elijah. That's right. And uh, he made a, he made, he made he really made a good did. point. Um, he said he wouldn't be surprised that, that that through opening of a window, the raven, as directed by God, went into Ahab, King Ahab, went to the, one of the banquet rooms mm -hmm. and just snatched some food and brought it to the man of God. I thought about that. That sure does make sense. To me, that I wouldn't be surprised. Right. If somebody here's, threw a here's the enemy. Here's the enemy treating him like this. He said, oh, you're going to treat my servant like that? Raven, go over there and get some food and bring it to the man of God off the king's table. But God, that's another way of God providing for his people. Oh, yes. Um, he said, he talked about, um, um, he mentioned the drought. He said, what the purpose was, he mentioned three, but I, I got two at least. He said, turn, uh, the purpose of drought, to turn the people of God back to him and then to let, let us know that he is our provider. And I thought about that in the day and the season that we're living in. I think about four weeks and two days, we're going to have to make a decision. Mm. Do we go with the Republican or do we go with the Democrat? And those, some say, oh, absolutely, we can't go with the Republican uh, nominee. And somebody said, no, we can't go with her, the, 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 the Democratic uh, nominee, whoever we get in the White House. First of all, it won't be like Obama. Uh, he he's just a man. He just makes us proud. I know we can't agree with everything he does, but he's not in. He wasn't. He didn't win the White House to be our savior. Christ is our savior. But nevertheless, whoever gets in there, we're gonna still Harry. have. We're gonna still still have to depend on Christ Jesus. I know you want to talk on praise, and uh, and and I just wanted to finish up what I start. Started last Saturday, Sunday rather. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, but um, I'll catch up with you. Maybe I interrupt you a little oh, bit. Oh yes. As, as we as go. thoughts come to me, but uh, go ahead. I was thinking about praise uh, and how uh, David, the Lord revealed to me. I was reading Psalms 23. That's a familiar passage of scripture. But David himself talked from a place where he had knowledge about, where he had experience in, and that being nothing but a shepherd. And he began to say, the Lord is my shepherd. He understood what that really meant. Him being a shepherd over his flock, he could speak from that place of knowledge and that place of understanding. And how he began to speak about God leading us. And I, I thought about a, a shepherd 
He knows where to lead his flock. He leads them where to get water. He leads them to get the green pasture. He says he leads them into a green pasture. He leads them away from danger. He watches over them so the enemy uh, won't slip in the camp and take one of them captive. He also knows how to administer them. If something happens to one, he knows how to, uh, you know, uh, treat their injuries. And I begin to think about us as saints of God. We have to get to the point, point where we want to praise and give God thanks from a place of knowledge that we know and what we can pull upon and, and draw upon. And as a young child, I began to think about when my sister got uh, sick, her name was Cynthia, at the age of 10 months old. She had encephalitis, she had the mumps and the measles, running fever, and they told my mother that my sister would not live. And if she did live, she would be a vegetable. The Lord blessed my sister, and through prayer, she would have convulsions. And we didn't know until we got around 9, 10 like that and found out she was having convulsions. My mother would have to to work on her treater so she wouldn't swallow her tongue. We got involved with her and had to start praying and binding the enemy. Seemed like sometime he'll come in the room to attack her and make her afraid and she'll go into convulsion. We began to pray. As a young child, I remember I started praying with the authority that God would relieve that and bind the enemy and draw him away from my sister. And so as a young child bringing, being brought up in that environment, I began to know and, and know how to praise God in situations that come my way. You know, when I get this uh, discouraged, when trouble come my way, I know that I peg it. I know that it's the enemy come or it's God either trying me. Sometimes he's trying me. And when we know that we should give praise no matter what our life is going through. So he sings a song when blessings go and when praises go up, it say blessings will come down. If we begin to praise God through our situation, praise him when things are not going right, God will begin to bless us and anoint us and gives us the things that we need. I thought about another song, Sister Deborah and her mother. I think both of them sing this song. It say, press your way through. Deborah. It say, press Deborah Bird. Deborah Bird, thank you. And Sister Star. She said, that song say, press your way through. Press your way through. You can't give up now. Press your way through. Press your way through. Press your way through. It say, God's got something better. If you press your way through, some of us are not even pressing our way. We giving up. When the enemy comes and we say, oh God, here we go again. I'm, I'm getting weak. I can't make it. But honey, if we begin to praise God, he'll take that burden. He'll lift that burden that we have and he'll take it away through our praise if we let him do that. What do you think about praising God through your situations, honey? I agree with you. <laughs> I'm glad you're on fire today. My Lord. I uh, feel good because God, if we give yeah. him praise, what did the scripture I say? The Bible said that uh, go in and talk and yeah. it'll come back it'll to come you. It'll come back to you. But, uh, <laughs> but check, check this out. Um, when Jesus touched the 10 leopards or healed the 10 leopards, matter of fact, they didn't get, he, he didn't heal them immediately, but as they walked, as they walked, went, right. as they, went mm -hmm. they were healed. Um, matter of fact, before I think he told them, go to the priest and show yourself. That's right. That was that was a, that was a requirement. You just mm -hmm. couldn't enter and back into the home until you got the they okay. They had to be declared to be declared, declared clean, clean again. That's right. Declared clean by the priest. But catch this. That's all he told them, right? Mm -hmm. But only one went back. That's right. To give God around. thanks. So didn't then Jesus said, "Were there not? Where are the other nine? That's right. And he, I think the man said, oh, "I'm the only one that came back." That's right. But this is what I'm trying to get to. There are certain there are things that God do in our lives that should automatically generate a thanks. Okay. Yeah. He didn't ask for thanks, but it's almost like common courtesy. If I open the door for you. I, at the very least, you can just say thank you. Thank you. you. So, the, so they should have went back to give God praise. You know how some of us are. God, we beg God for His mercy, beg God for this. But when God does it, we act like He never did anything for us, and we did it on our own. Mm -hmm. Only one went back to give Him praise and give Him thanks. Where were the nine? And so, again, my point is, He didn't ask them. But it, but it should have generated automatically. You know, somebody taught me. Nobody told me. If if I wipe away your debt of ten thousand, fifteen thousand, 
at the very least, you can tell me thank you. Send me a box of candy or thank something. You. And you know, I shouldn't have to call you up and throw out hints mm -hmm. to you. So, so praise it should be what we do when we think about how the Lord kept us through the week, kept our minds. I think about the preacher um, that got stabbed and God and God kept him. Uh, kept, uh, didn't allow no other That's harm right. come to him. He could have been come to him. Today. I he thought about a man. Oh God, is it 15 years? I don't know how long ago. Picked up a can, a garbage can from McDonald's, and hit me in the back of my head. That's right. You know he could have. He could have easily uh, took the edge of that can, the pointed and, and, and edge, pointed of it. edge That's right. and cut my head open. You know, I didn't. I didn't care metal. too much. It I didn't care much. Thing. Care much for it, but, but sometimes. We got to flip that. It's what didn't happen. Sometimes we complain what did happen instead of being thankful for what didn't happen. Thank you. And and that's why. And then then you talked about pressing. I thought about the analogy of football. And this is for my football fans. They know what I'm talking about. You know you have offense and defense. Well, the defense is not on the field for, and it, just to allow the offense to score touchdowns. Mm -hmm. If they if they're just going to allow them to score a touchdown they need to sit, be on the sidelines but what they do they they employ deploy a different types of defenses to keep the offense from, from scoring. scoring that's right and that's the same way that the devil does he's just not gonna allow you to praise him magnify and glorify him glorify the lord he's gonna put he's gonna press you on on all, on all sides in order that when you come sunday instead of you giving him praise you in a you in a depressed state but by the time you get, if you can just get to Sunday, thank you. If you can just get to, to Sunday, the house of the Lord, you can just get to the house of the Lord. Thank you, man. You ought to tear things up, especially if you're young. Young, you mean you ought to be just full of energy. But the point is that you ought to give him some kind of praise. I, the, the, when I was growing up, I loved. Um, you can help me out on this, S. E. Mitchell. Uh -huh. I, I, I loved him when I was growing up. And he said, if you, if you can't, you shake your if you can't open your mouth, shake your big head. That's what he used to say. <laughs> then if you can't, he said, if you can't shake your big head, rub your belly. And if you, if you can't do that, just say glory. I holler something out. In other words, he was trying to say, say something. Give God something. He said, all things give thanks. Yeah. Everything that yeah. happened in our life, we need to give thanks. That means the good and the bad. You ought to see the good out of the bad things that happen to you. Now let me touch on this. The sacrifice of praise. Okay. Take that sacrifice and go back to the Old Testament and, and just recall when they had to present a sacrifice unto God. Mm -hmm. Two things. The sacrifice had to be right. Okay. What they what they presented to That's God. Right. And they had to have had to be right in their heart. That's okay, it. you catch that? Uh, okay. they, they may not have been right. That's why they brought the sacrifice. But when they brought it, they had to come with the right heart. So two things. When we come with a sacrifice, a praise, a effort, but also what we bring, we can't be laying up with Sally all night long Sunday, Saturday, Thank and you. try to give a praise on Sunday. Thank you. Honey. We can't be drinking at the bars when Sweet Jimmy's around and drink at Sweet Jimmy's and dance and, and drop it like it's hot. And try to drop it for the Lord on Sunday like it's hot. It don't. It don't. It's not That's compatible. Right. It doesn't work that way. So we, when we give Him the sacrifices of praise, it got to be from the right heart, and we got to press into the sacrifice. Sometimes you may not even feel like it. That's it. You know, you're, you're tired. You're worn out. The devil beat you up. But I'm, so I'm gonna give Him some type of praise. What came to my mind when you was talking about that? I thought about uh, the uh, um, Adam and Eve's sons. <clears throat> uh, Cain slew Abel. When you think about it, they both gave the same sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But the Bible talks about that Cain, uh, how mm -hmm. much time we have, gave a, he gave a more excellent sacrifice than his brother did. Mm -hmm. And I began to think about it, Gary just saying that it has to be what your motive is. You're not giving, giving praise to be seen or you giving praise that, you know, getting one up somebody else. Somebody gave a praise report and you got the one up and getting one up on top of mine is a little bit better. Atop that, it's not you have to have the right motive when you come before God with praise to him because he knows their desire and the intents of every man's heart. He knows it already. We look, the Bible says man looks on the outward appearance, but God is the one that will look down on the inside and see who you really are and what your motives are. Let me just say this. We're almost hitting 15 minutes. Okay. Let me just say this. I know on this earth, in this world, 
my gift is not singing. But this is what I do believe. When I do sing, when I open up my mouth, open up my mouth to sing, it won't get me no contracts. It won't get me no invitations. <laughs> <laughs> it, it won't do that. But this, <laughs> but this is what I do believe. By the time it reaches heaven, when it's coming okay. from the heart, it sounds just as good as your voice. Okay. Your voice sounds good on earth yeah. and heaven. My voice may not sound good on earth, but by the time it reaches heaven, it sounds just as good as anybody else's voice. Oh, you say got a song the angels can't sing because yeah. that's your song. Yeah. You've been not, redeemed. Not only my song, but my point is, mm -hmm. it's coming from the heart. There you go. Because yeah. the Bible said, make a joyful, all of us to make a joyful noise. Right. You know. I, I, just, I just want to drop that on the singers. I know. You know. The Bible says, out of the heart flows the issues of life. Uh -huh. Whatever you have in you is going to come through your heart. If you're not uh, emoting the right type of uh, uh, spirit, with your praise, with your even with your gifts. I don't think people have a good gift. They can flat foot sing. I'll never be able to sing like they sing. But if they don't have the anointing of God and resonance in their life, it's just like sound and brass and tinkling cymbal. Mm -hmm. And what people will go over, oh yeah, she had a good voice. She can really sing. She can but did the Lord yeah. move you spiritually? Did it touch your heart? But also some people in the world can oh, they got voices can rock it with their voice. That's right. But it doesn't mean nothing. You they don't remember, speak to your spiritual. Yeah, remember in the Old Testament when they brought a sacrifice unto God, and their heart was white, right, and they brought the right sacrifice. Remember right. now they couldn't bring any kind of animal. That's right. And, you know we, we want bring we can't bring God any kind of sacrifice and pray. No roll kill. Pray, you can't yeah, bring him roll kill. Bring him any kind of praise and think he's going to be satisfied with that. But I kind of just lost my thought just like that. You got That's something right. else to say? No, you he's getting late. Say but, something. I'm okay, a thought how he back. had a thought. But I, I was thinking about it. just be careful when we praise God. We do it out of oh, a hey. sincere heart. Okay. That's the thing. If you do it out of sincere heart, it will move God. He will stand up in heaven, look down to earth, and whatever you need, he'll uh, make that situation right for you. Here you go. When when everything is is right, the heart is right, and the sacrifice that you present is right, what did the Bible say? It's a sweet smelling savior that goes up before the lord in his nostrils that's right that's true just think about that our praise. When, we, when we bring present a praise i may be impressed by your voice and what you're singing but if you haven't lived nothing all week it stinks in the nostrils, the of, nostrils god. of god yeah. that's a good point yeah. so Thank let's you. just let's get closer to god you know my whole thing is we're living in the last days it's going to come a time where our prayer is going to mean something. It's going to mean quick action from God. That because split of the circumstances. moment. Because of our circumstances. We're going to need God to move instantaneously for us. And he yeah. will do it for us if we're in the, in the realm of his spirit where All we right. should be. You pray uh, today, babe. Okay, I'll pray again. I'll pray uh, next week. Okay. Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness. Yes, again, we thank you for your tender Jesus. mercy and your keeping power. That's kept us up to this point in time and hour. Oh God, look on the oh saints of God and the people of God Touch everywhere. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, those, all those that are going yes, into Lord. surgery, Lord. Yes, Lord. For whether it ails them, their Thank throats, you, their mouths, yes, their bodies. Their yes, feet, Lord, whatever it might be, knees, oh God. might be. Oh God, Thank touch you, their Jesus. bodies, touch the doctors. The Jesus, oh, God, oh God, bring their bodies in alignment yes, to Thy Word. Thank you, I believe Jesus. it's somewhere in Peter that by, you, by Your stripes we, we were, healed. were healed. Oh God, thank we you, thank Jesus. You for what You're going to do for us this week. Oh God, we bind the enemy that comes against us. We thank God for the victory yes, that we will walk in this week. Thank You. And Jesus. look on the people, God, and the leadership of, it, of God's people everywhere. This we pray. In Jesus' name. And one last Amen. thing. Inbox me. If somebody need prayer, ask God, have a prayer request before the Lord. I've been led by the Lord to do this. The Bible says we're two or three, and it may be one just with you and just that one person. But if you inbox me your prayer request, me and my husband will pray over that request, and I believe the Lord will work it out for you. In about one minute, just saying for one minute, less than one minute, uh, pray. Uh, what's the one? What's the one I had you saying before? Pressure with you? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Let's do the when praises go up. Yeah. They say, I've learned how to live holy, and I've learned how to live right. I've learned how to suffer, and if I suffer, I'll gain eternal life when I see Jesus. 
It will be amen when I see the one who suffered and died on Calvary. Amen. All of my trials, all of my troubles, they will be over when I see Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a oh. amen. Oh, thank you, Take Jesus. Take care. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.